Hello, my name is John Schneider. When I was a kid, I used to visit my grandma Vi in the Jersey Bayshore area, and I'd take 8mm movies of my family and their friends. In fact, I was the family filmmaker. Today I live here, but traded my film camera for video, and recently shot this tugboat in the Shrewsbury River. Welcome to Jersey Bayshore Country. This is where you'll find Raritan Bay, the Atlantic Ocean, as well as Sandy Hook Bay. Where is the Jersey Bayshore? Let's get oriented by starting with the big picture. It's somewhere in here, part of the universe and definitely part of our world. But it's like no place I've ever experienced. And as soon as we land, I'll show you around. Hello everybody, it's your host for Jersey Bayshore Country, John Schneider once again. And in this episode, we're going up the Shrewsbury River. It's going to be a great ride. Now, the Shrewsbury River is one of five major tributaries which empty into Raritan Bay. But first, let's get oriented in terms of where we are. Here's a nautical map on the left and a corresponding satellite photo on the right. Okay? Now, we're starting here, location within Jersey Bayshore Country, where a bridge connects highlands to Sandy Hook and Seabright. And where this red dot is located, that's us. And we're going to end up at one of the narrowest parts of the river over here where the other red dot is located. Now let's take a closer look at the nautical map, which we'll show along the way. So here's Highlands. And here's Hartshorn Woods Park, which we'll see from time to time off in the distance. And here's the bridge to Sandy Hook and Seabright. And again, this red dot is us in a very small boat. And you'll understand why we're in a small boat a little later in the program. All right, so you know where we are now, right? Good. And you brought something to eat, something to drink? Excellent. Okay, let's get going. So here we are in the river facing the bridge, and there's Highlands. And we're turning now to head south uh, to go south along the Shrewsbury River. Seabright's on our left. Highlands is on our right. But not for long, because we're going to leave this area, and we're going to approach where the Navasink River empties into the Shrewsbury River, right at the southern tip of Hartshorn Woods. Now, many, many years, hundreds to thousands of years ago, the Navasink River actually broke through this spot in Seabright and flowed directly into the sea. Uh, but today, a little different. It actually slams into Seabright, makes a hard left, and goes towards Sandy Hook Bay, where it then empties out into the ocean. And here at the mouth of the Navasink River, you'll find a bunch of tidal islands, which virtually disappear when the tide comes in. And all that's left are marsh grasses where birds and turtles hide. And keep an eye on Hartshorn Woods because we'll see it off in the distance as we head to our final destination. Let's take a few minutes and explore the tidal islands of the Navasink. Now, you could almost get lost in these tidal islands, but not quite. I, I know you'd get lost in these high grasses or at least bitten by a snapping turtle, but we're not going to go in the high grasses. And this is looking west where the Navasink flows if we could see over this tidal island in front of us. Rumps and again. And here's the reason why our small boat is so great out here. Very shallow water. And in some cases, boaters will get stranded if they're not watching a depth gauge. It's only about a foot and a half deep here. We're still in the tidal island area at the mouth of the Navasink for just a few more minutes. You know, birds love these sandbars because they can cool off and go fishing at the same time. Still pretty shallow in here, and it's going to be until we return to the Shrewsbury River. There's Barley Point in Rumson, which is actually a 38-acre island in the Navasink River, comprising a private community of 50-plus homes. Here's a shot to give you another point of reference. Seabright and the Shrewsbury River are behind us. So we're still amongst the tidal islands, but now seeing some waterfront homes in Rumson. Rumson's neighbor again, and then Rumson, both divided by a river. Folks around here love to canoe or kayak, especially among the tidal islands where there are very few waves from boats or the wind. The Navasink River is actually not a river, it's called an estuary. It's about eight miles long, and I bet you didn't know this, but it's officially known not as the Navasink River, but the North Shrewsbury River. It makes sense when you see the map. 
It was also inhabited by Native Americans and the Lenni Lenape tribe, which fished these waters, canoed up and down these rivers, and hunted in the hillsides. Why don't we just listen to some music while we meander through this area and make our way back to the Shrewsbury River. Okay, so here we are back in the Shrewsbury River and headed south once again. And there is the Seabright Rumpson Bridge, so let's take out the nautical map. Okay, we started up to the right of the map by that green dot and we passed by the mouth of the Navasink River, saw some tidal islands by this green dot, and now we're about to pass under the bridge at this green dot, a lot of green dots. (laughs) <laughs> Shall we do it? Okay, but I got to warn you that this is the smallest area, the narrowest part of the Shrewsbury River, where the water tries to squeeze through and the currents aren't treacherous. I mean, my boat sometimes goes sideways in the current. Ah, we made it. Now, on the other side of Seabright, the Atlantic Ocean, And in the Shrewsbury River, well, quite a few marinas. Oh, here's uh, Gunning Island, not to be confused with a tidal island. It's actually 32 acres, which is home to blue heron, ducks, and even deer. Incidentally, there are some major dredging operations being undertaken by the Army Corps of Engineers throughout the Jersey Bay Shore country. And hopefully, many of those sandbars we talked about earlier and saw will be eliminated for better boating. Uh, This pipe is part of the operation to pump sand elsewhere. And this is Sedge Island, another smaller island just south of Gunning Island. Another marina, one of many on the Seabright waterfront. And there's where we're headed to make a turn into the larger part of the Shrewsbury. It's called the Channel Club and Marina located in the Monmouth Beach. So let's pull out the nautical map again and I'll show you where we're going next. So here's where we are between two islands and here's where we're headed toward the Channel Club and here's where we'll go next into the middle of the Shrewsbury before going on to our final destination, one of the tributaries where the Shrewsbury begins. Here's some more piping for the dredging operation. Here's some more tidal islands down this way. Guess what this big boy is doing? Yep, dredging to deepen the channel. All right, we're in Monmouth Beach now and getting closer to the Channel Club. Some very beautiful boats in here and much bigger than the one you and I are on. And just like I explained now, we're turning to head toward the larger part of the Shrewsbury. And when we get there, you'll see that it's almost like a large bay. As we make the turn, this is all Monmouth Beach now. And look at those pilings. Somebody's getting ready to build a new home on top of them. 
They might even see the Atlantic Ocean when they're, uh, when they're finished. Ah, the proud birds of the Shrewsbury River. You see lots of these barges and equipment shoring up bulkheads along the waterfronts these days. And see, there's Hartshorn Woods way off in the distance by the mouth of the Navasink River. And there's Sedge Island we passed earlier. And there's Seabright and Monmouth Beach. Now I've zoomed in a little here so you can see Hartshorn Woods again. Rumson is the shoreline closest to us. There are quite a few of these lobster traps in the area. And another tidal island, they're everywhere. Ah, water treatment facility, how nice. <laughs> and speaking of water, it's pretty shallow in here, so let's be careful. And here's a pan of the largest part of the Shrewsbury River. And like I said, it's almost a bay. Not too many boats out today, but I did see a couple of jet skis running around having fun. They can easily go over these shallow places better than I can. Now remember where we came from, there it is. So as we approach these channel markers, let's take another look at the map to see where we are and where we'll go next. The old green dot is us, and here's where we're going next. And here's where we plan to end up, so we're getting closer. See, there you go, there's a jet ski. Here's a shot looking east towards Seabright and Monmouth Beach, and then Rumson is over to the left. All right, so where are we headed? Toward Gooseneck Point, and we'll stay to the right of Gooseneck Point and head up one of the tributaries of the Shrewsbury River. But we're now outside the channel, and the water is pretty shallow, and I'm starting to see lots of white jellyfish for some reason. Okay, we're bearing right at Gooseneck Point, and look at what I just spotted. It's a milky white jellyfish, which can sting you, so don't touch it under any circumstances. Like a lot of jellyfish, this one propels itself through the water by rhythmically expanding and contracting its bells. And the bells are the major part of its flying saucer-shaped body. Looks like a ghost. Okay, we've moved past Rumson on our right and into Little Silver, New Jersey where folks are building some new homes and working on some older ones. Looking east again, you can actually see how big the Shrewsbury Bay actually is. And here we are, heading towards Seven Bridges Road, which carries traffic back and forth between Little Silver and Oceanport. But there's a deep secret about this bridge and road that you may not know. All right, so maybe it's time to pull out your sandwich and have a bite to eat. Well, I tell you a short story. <laughs> Here's the question, really. Why is this called Seven Bridges Road when it doesn't cross seven bridges? I mean, as far as I can tell, there are four bridges, not seven. So what happened to the other three bridges? Well, some people say there may have been three additional tributaries at one time, and over the years, they all got silted in and finally disappeared. But I can't find any older maps that show them. Do I know the answer to the questions I just asked? <laughs> Sadly, I don't, but uh, did you enjoy your sandwich? <laughs> okay, let's move on. I love going under bridges. It's fun to look up and see something hardly anyone else sees. As you might expect, the water is going to get shallower now, and the banks of the river, or creek as it's fast becoming, are going to get a lot closer together. And we may start hitting things on the bottom. The tributary has now become Parker's Creek. Still some very nice homes along the banks of this creek, however. Oh look, a railroad bridge, and it looks pretty low to the water. In the meantime, I want you to make note of this free public boat ramp in Little Silver, and it doesn't look busy at all. All right, we gotta make a decision. Should we go for it? My question is, what if the tide rises while we're upriver and we can no longer make it under the bridge on the return trip? So what do you think? Let's go for it? <laughs> okay, let's do it. You better duck, because here we go. Hey, we made it. Oh, look, we just missed a commuter train. But we didn't miss these two white ducks on the riverbank. Oh my gosh, I hope this guy's not attacking us. Oh good.
Oh, look, another bridge. Okay, see where we are? It's time for the map. Here's our location. We're at Parker's Creek Bridge. And what I love about this old bridge is... Well, let's go under it and I'll tell you. Watch your head again. What I like about this old bridge, it's built on wooden pilings. <laughs> I mean, there's no concrete at all. Ah, we made it. And now we're getting very close to the end of our journey, but there's one more surprise. Here it is. Look, it's old Fort Monmouth, which was closed due to a lack of interest or something like that. For a while, it was used to house homeless victims of Hurricane Sandy, but today it's a bit of a ghost town. Very eerie. It's also very muddy up here and extremely shallow, so let's just go a little bit further. It's getting sort of semi-wild up here. I mean, this is the furthest western point of the Shrewsbury River that can be traversed in a small boat. Look, it looks like the leaves are starting to change colors. Look at this basketball court on the old military base. And more empty buildings. You know, this guy's a little nervous because he probably doesn't see many boats up here. And I see the platform and the nest, but no osprey. Once in a while, they take off to hide if they hear somebody coming. No, that's not an osprey. I'm also noticing that the water is very brown and muddy. It's not a good sign for things to come. So what do you think? Should we call it a day? How about one last glimpse of this building at Fort Monmouth and then we'll head back. Somebody's got a boat up here, but it's not very big, is it? Well, we made it as far as we could go. I hope you enjoyed the trip. I did. We gotta head back over to the Navasink River where we're gonna meet up with a New York, New Jersey baykeeper and some kayakers. It should be a lot of fun. Hi, my name is Joe Reynolds. I'm with the New York, New Jersey Baykeeper. And the New York, New Jersey Baykeeper helps to clean up the waters of Raritan Bay and Sand Hook Bay and the Navasink River over here and the Shrewsbury River. Uh, we help to bring back the oyster populations here in the area, which used to be for a long time all over the place. But unfortunately, oyster populations due to too much pollution in our waters uh, sort of uh, diminished. And it's hard to find now, um, but we're trying to bring them back and, and try to clean up our waters. And we need lots of people to help do that. We can't do it alone. We need lots of people to help, to help us do that. Okay, well today is a kayak program. We're going to take people out and we're, we're going to educate them a little bit about the history and the ecology of the Navasink River. And the whole idea is that, you know, Monmouth County is a coastal county. New Jersey is a coastal state. And yet very few people really get the opportunity to be on the water. And our hope is once people get on the water, uh, they'll like it and they'll love the water and once you love something you're going to want to protect that and so the whole idea is to get people on the water and and hopefully they're going to want to do more to protect that wonderful resource so we we launch them here in clay pit creek clay pit creek gets its name from the native americans the lenape people who live in this area and they would come down to this creek and, and get the clay and make clay pottery and, and different things that they need to survive in this area so, and even today you could go along the banks and get some of that clay and, and maybe even make clay pottery for yourself. So this is Clay Pit Creek, which is a tributary to the Navasink River. We start here and then we go out in the Navasink River. We head over to an osprey platform, an active osprey platform. And then we generally stay around in that area. It's a nice little cove area over there and then turn around and come on back. It's a two hour trip and it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a beautiful park, you can see here. We've got some herons and egrets and ospreys flying around over here. It's a beautiful park. Monmouth County Park System does a wonderful job of getting open space and maintaining uh, uh, that land for people to use. Uh, one of the biggest problems with the Navasink River is public access to its waters. So there's just not a lot of good public access if you want to launch a kayak. And so what's great about this park that the Monmouth County Park System has is that it's, it's good access to the river. It gives us uh, great access to get people down there to enjoy the water. So we normally uh, get people set up in their kayaks. We give them some life jackets or personal flotation devices, paddles. Um, we get them all set up and then we give them a little intro, a little safety talk. 
show them how to paddle. Uh, not everybody knows how to paddle. Uh, people come from different backgrounds. Some people do, some people don't. This might be their first trip out on a kayak, so we want to make sure everybody's on the same page when we get out on the water. Uh, we're, we're, we're naturalists. We like nature, so really, this is not, this is not a very difficult trip. We, we like to go out. We like to look at wildlife. We like to talk a little bit about the history and the ecology of the Navasink River. We like to tell you why it's polluted a little bit, why it needs help. So we're just going to get you on the water. There's no rapids. We don't want anybody, just, you know, turning over in their kayaks. You know, it's not that type of trip. We tell them they always have to keep their life jackets on. That's really important. You can't unzip that. It's a really important safety procedure. And then we, we get them down to the bulkhead and we get them in the water and we launch them. Okay, I'm Kay with the County Park System. I'm a naturalist. Um, we do a lot of different things, but mostly what we do is try to help people fall in love with nature again. And then once we get everybody out in the water and everybody together, we'll give them some talks about the history of the area. History talking about this area used to be a summer home for uh, Thomas Edison. So we talk about how this Navasink River used to be always a home for the, the rich and the, and the famous for a long period of time. And, and this, this stems from one of the reasons why we have poor public access to this area, um, to, the, to the water itself. And then we talk about some of the ecology, talk about some of the fish, talk about some of the crabs. This Navasink River happens to be one of the best crabbing areas in all of New Jersey. Uh, some of the great fishing areas in New Jersey as well too. It's a beautiful river. Um, and so we talk about a little bit of the history and the ecology that way and, uh, and hopefully get people motivated, inspired to want to wanna clean it up and do more to protect this area and get better public access to the Navasink River. Well, you know, the most unusual thing I think is just the wildlife. You know, people, people come to Monmouth County, people think of Monmouth County as just not having a tremendous diversity of wildlife. And yet when they go on the water, they see the birds, they see the herons, they see the egrets, they see the ospreys, you know, they see the ospreys nesting, they see the baby ospreys, they see fish jumping out of the water, they see terrapin turtles, you know, they see this diversity of wildlife that's pretty much in their backyards. And they didn't realize that, wait a minute, the Navasink River is just not boats, it's just not boats speeding by, and you know, it's, it's more to it than that. It's actually a really good home and habitat for lots of wildlife as well. The big problem with the, the Navasink River is, of course, pollution. And when I mean pollution, I mean really people pollution. So you have a lot of trash coming in there. You know, all that plastic bags and plastic bottle caps and plastic bottles. You know, all that plastic, all that junk, cigarette butts, all that gets washed into the Navasink River. So that's called non-point source pollution or people pollution. And a lot of that pollution gets into the Navasink River and really does damage to water quality, to fish health, just to overall quality for people just to use it, right? And then also a big problem is fecal coliform. So there's horse farms, there's uh, antiquated sewage treatment systems, and so sometimes, you know, when we get heavy rainfalls, a lot of that trash, sometimes the raw sewage gets into the Navasink River, and, and that does real damage to, to people who want to use that and to the aquatic life that calls this place home. The Baykeeper is, is a small staff. It's, it's a nonprofit environmental organization. There's only a handful of full-time employees, um, and so they need lots of volunteers. They need lots of people to help clean up the waters, right? We do beach cleanups and stream cleanups, and so the Baykeeper needs people to clean up. They need people to help out with different volunteer projects, uh, oyster restoration, different things like that. Uh, we need people to do outreach for the Baykeeper. Uh, we can't be everywhere, and so we need people to help us do different things. And so we're always looking for volunteers. And so you can go to our website, New York, New Jersey, Baykeeper, NYNJ, Baykeeper.org. Come to our website, check us out, and, and get involved with the organization. This is a joint partnership between the Monmouth County Park System and the New York Jersey Baykeeper. The Monmouth County Park System does a lot of good things as well, too, and they're always looking for volunteers as well, too. So, you know, I would suggest if you have time, why not volunteer for both groups? Because both groups do so many great things to help up, uh, help clean up the waters and, and protect our open spaces. And so if you have time and you really want to do something, go to the Monmouth County Park System website, go to the New York, New Jersey Baykeeper website and help out clean up our, our local environment. 
Finally, let's head to Seabright, where some young dudes are going to show us how to skimboard in preparation for some annual skimboard competition called Skim Bag. By the way, we'll also play one of my original songs while we watch them. Jack, or I'm from Florida. I don't know what part of the world that you live in. I'm Teddy. I'm from uh, Mattawan, New Jersey. You gotta ride a bike, take a skateboard, just get here somehow. Good wave is one that comes in close to shore, kind of pushes a little bit sideways, so you ride it out and slowly make your way back to the beach. Man, what a view. My name's Sean Stratton, I'm from Seabright, New Jersey. And how long have you been doing this? Uh, 15, 16 years. Is that right? Yeah. I hope you enjoyed your day on the water, two rivers, and the ocean. It doesn't get much better, my friends. And please join me again next week for another episode of Jersey Bay Shore Country. Bye-bye, everybody.